For whom was this day made? You know, most of us don't even know there is a day other than something we have to do, get up, get stuff done, struggle with this, run after that. For whom was the sun made? For whom is the color green when the early spring sun hits it like that? Or the bare tree that sets it off, the fullness of the ground, the starkness of the tree. The, the point is, that everything that exists was made for you, and if its existence depended upon you noticing it, there'd be no existence. Because our lives exist in a completely different world than the one in which we've been given for the purpose of our fulfillment. And fulfillment is very different than pleasure. Real contentment isn't a sensation at all. It's quite still. And because it's quite still and it emanates from a world that is quite still and out of which all of this vibration and this noise descends and, and into which we are born, it really behooves you, if you're at all serious about wanting to know something of God's life, of the life above you, it behooves you to start recognizing how absent you are from yourself, which is the same as the green and the tree and the sun. Sometimes I get home at night after a class or I'm outside pl playing with the animals. And you'll see something and there's a particular impression that comes and the particular impression, I don't know if any of you have had it, because you're looking at maybe one little lily next to a rock or something. You realize that, 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 that was put there just for you. Nobody else is going to see it. <laughs> Nobody else is going to know anything about the, the, the way that particular flower tilts to the left and sets off the thing to the right. Nobody's going to know the, how the gray seems to match the dark green of the stalk. Nobody's going to know it. And then I think when I have thoughts like that, I wonder if God, I wonder if the divine looks down and ever silently weeps for all of the extraordinary beauty that is part of the manifestation of that life and almost nobody notices it. And it wouldn't be so much that you don't notice this flower because you're looking at that moss on that tree trunk. But you're not seeing it all. It's the true nature of spiritual blindness is that we're captured by our own thoughts by what they want and what they don't want. In a, in a true hamster wheel. <clears throat> you know, when you get the things you want, sometimes there's gratitude. But it's the things you're given that you didn't ask for that bring real gratitude to you. And everything is given to you. 
Everything's given to you. Don't dismay. We seem to be a lowly species. Full of immense potential. But truly trapped between what we're going to talk about today, which is this, I call them the pillars of pain. An invisible world that we have been unknowingly consenting to live in and that once our consent is withdrawn, we can change everything, not only about the experience we have, but the way in which the experience is derived. <clears throat> 